Hi, welcome to Quick Chat with Jay. I hope you're doing well. Today's episode is actually one that I made about two years ago when I was just doing an audio version of my podcast. Link is in the description if you want to listen to my past episodes. So I hope you like it. And if you want to see more content like this, I hope that you subscribe. All right, I'll see you at the end. You may notice network for popular shows such as Rick and Morty, The Boondocks, Robot Chicken, Aqua Scene Hunger Force, Squid Billies, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, and so much more. Today, I want to talk about how Adult Swim got its start, its rise of popularity, a little controversy it got into, and some fun facts. So, Adult Swim. It started off as a spin-off block of Cartoon Network based on the success of an earlier show, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. The channel started experimenting with late-night programming in an attempt to see if teenagers or young adults would tune in after hours. If you don't know what Space Ghost Coast to Coast was, it was a talk show that was hosted by an animated 60s TV superhero, Space Ghost. It was filled with random and off-putting humor that kind of set the tone for what would be Adult Swim. After seeing the success from people tuning in to watch Space Ghost, Turner Broadcasting created a subsidiary called Ghost Planet Industries that later became William Street Studios. With that production house, Cartoon Network started to air late night broadcasts of adult focused shows such as Aqua Teen Hunger Force, C-Lab 2021, and Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law. It kept the shows airing almost in secret until September 2nd, 2001 at 10 p.m. with an episode of one of its most popular series, Home Movies, airing. That night is when Adult Swim debuted as a Sunday night programming block. Next, how did it gain popularity? If all this stuff was basically in secret to begin with, how did it get to be such of a big network as it is today? To me, I think it's kind of crazy that Adult Swim gained attention in the first place because it is something that I don't think most companies would even think of doing or should I say not doing because in its beginnings, the channel, and I say that with air quotes, decided not to show any kind of advertising to actually, you know, like say this is something new for people to watch. Also, this network, I say again with air quotes, aired on the same channel as Cartoon Network and if you don't know that's mainly for children to be watching and I can say now that I'm older I can see why that was such like a great idea that they decided to air Adult Swim on the same network as Cartoon Network because once I got older I could and I'm speaking really like in my teen years <laughs> even now because I still do enjoy you know animated shows but I could watch the cartoons that were kind of for kids, but not really, such as Amazing World of Gumball, Regular Show, and Adventure Time. And then, you know, I could wait around and watch more adult-themed stuff, such as Family Guy, American Dad, and Rick and Morty. Speaking of Family Guy, when that show was canceled by Fox in 2002, and it started having reruns on Adult Swim in 2003, it started gaining more viewership than it did on its original channel, Thanks to Adult Swim, Fox decided to give the show another try after, you know, canceling it, and they ended up reviving it in 2005. And that wasn't the only time that one of Fox's animated adult shows got revived thanks to Adult Swim. Futurama was another, and so was American Dad. Well, with American Dad, it's a little bit different because the relationship between Seth MacFarlane and Adult Swim is so good that... Adult Swim decided to join forces with TBS, which is another network under t Turner Broadcasting, to save American Dad by having it air on TBS instead of Fox. In a sense, I think this network is kind of a force because imagine if your show gets canceled and thanks to them, you end up getting it revived. And it's the same thing that happens with today. You can look at a show like Tuka and Birdie that originally came on Netflix and you know, Adult Swim was like, you know what, we'll take a chance on it. And now Tuka and Birdie has a new home at Adult Swim. So that is basically how Adult Swim started to gain a little bit of popularity. And I feel like when it comes to someone or something gaining popularity, this is not always the case, but sometimes they can end up getting themselves into a little controversy. So let's go ahead and talk about <laughs> a little bit of trouble they got in or just a little bit of funny business. Let's say that. So, in 2016, the network's slate of new and returning shows was analyzed. It was discovered 
all of the 47 people who were listed as creators for the shows, none of them were women. And there are only three examples found of women who were creators or producers. In response to, you know, people finding out that there were really any women who were listed as creators or anything for Adult Swim, a representative said, we are always on the lookout for a new creative partners and have talented women writing and producing on our original series. And pointed out that some of the creators of his online shows are women that the then adult swim vice president and cre creative director at the time mike lazo weighed in um you know on this thing again during uh reddit ask me anything trying to clarify his comments saying women don't tend to like conflict comedy often comes from conflict so that's probably why we or others have so few female projects nonetheless this was a dumb answer to get to a good question as Lucille Ball and Gilda Rad Radner to Amy Poehler and Amy Schumer proved my statement to be a load of generalized nonsense. I have to say I'm glad that he saw his errors and what he said but this is why people say think before you speak because I mean the way he said it was just like whoa we don't have any woman because it seems like women are interested in that I'm like that's a really bad cop out because women can enjoy you know like even though there are some distinct things that women like you can point out and see like okay that's what most you know women enjoy watching it's like that doesn't mean they're just totally exempt from anything that men also watch but i have to say i think since then they've gotten a little bit better uh with my main example being tuka and birdie uh being on a network which is you know created by a woman and i remember the creators of rick and morty saying that they hired more writers who are women on their staff so i guess it's moving in the right direction a little <laughs> you know um baby steps i guess baby steps before they really jump into something else but also some creators brett gelman he took an issue with what mike lasso said and he noted that being one of the reasons he left the network and because the network made a decision to air a show called Million Dollar Extreme World Peace, which was created by a comedian with ties to the alt-right community. Yeah. <laughs> I can see why he left, but luckily that show was canceled after six episodes. Another little thing down controversy lane. Uh, well, this one is a little bit more light, but it still caused some trouble. So, Adult Swim got in trouble for trying to promote one of their movies. On January 31st, 2007, Boston's police and fire departments responded to reports of possible live explosive devices planted throughout the city in its suburbs. And all that panic and emergency protocol end up being for nothing. There were LED powered light up signs depicting moon nights. Moon, hold on. I think I said that incorrectly. <laughs> moon nights hope that's how you say it but there were characters from Aquatine Hunger Force and they were just trying to promote their movie and thanks to that incident Turner had to end up paying two million to the city of Boston to settle the matter and the general manager of Cartoon Network at the time Jim Samples he had to apologize and then later resign because of this incident and the crazy thing is is that these signs have been placed in 10 other cities with no incident of the authorities being called. What was up with Boston that people decided, oh, we're gonna call the police because it just doesn't seem like something is like um, right here. <laughs> but this last one, I just think it's a little funny because <laughs> so I don't swim had a show it aired late at night called Off the Air that had random segments of animation without context or information, meaning from second to second, you might experience something beyond expectation. The controversy about this show that they aired comes from a segment they had called Creepers. And that featured pyramid headed figures spawning babies out of their robotic maws on their triangular heads before creating a percussion line by mangling and beating the babies against ob obelisk <laughs> structures. The babies in reaction seem to be having 
a joy being used as tools for these Silent Hill-esque entities. It wasn't until years later that someone made a tweet showing a clip saying this, Cartoon Network after hours, they show it in your face. They hope you aren't the kind of parent who monitors what your kids watch and do. They're busy conditioning them. What do you see here? I see witches abusing babies. This is not okay. This is not funny. Hashtag these people are sick. I have to say, uh, I watched the clip and it is incredibly jarring and it perfectly subverts your expectations. Considering I didn't know <laughs> what to expect in the first place, I think that person took it a little too serious. Like they took it too seriously because after watching that, I didn't get the urge to like hurt babies. That is a sentence I thought I'd never have to say in my life but it's true i didn't get the urge to do that and i mean go watch it for yourself i will warn you you might based on how you are personally you might get upset but i mean i don't know me probably because i can differentiate okay this is not real and obviously this is just made to be something that is kind of you know off the wall so i don't know but in my opinion, I was like, it's not that serious. It is weird, but it's not that serious. I don't know. But moving on from his controversies, I just want to go into a little bit of um, fun facts of trivia. I have, think I have about like four or five. So going back to Space Ghost Coast to Coast, it was the first show that Cartoon Network produced for the network. Uh, two episodes of the Boondocks were banned by Adult Swim. The two episodes were one, Hunger Strike, and two, the Uncle Ruckus reality show and they were banned because they painted the BET network in a bad light and BET they threatened to sue Adult Swim if they did not take these episodes you know off the air also an added fact about the boondocks I believe another one of their episodes was banned from BET because it paints Tyler Perry in a bad light I'm not really sure if Tyler Perry has like I mean I think now it's obvious he has a deal with BET because he has shows on BET Plus, um, such as Brothers and his other show, Sisters. Or, no, wait, it's not called Brothers. It's called Bra, I think. But years ago, I'm not sure what their relationship was. I do remember they used to show us movies a lot on that network. So maybe he had a deal with them anyway. But he got upset with this episode because the depiction of him and his character who you may or may not know Medea. you know it made him very upset and the name of the episode was called pause yeah that's just <laughs> i think in total there are like four banned boondock episodes but yeah that's a little bit of fun fact i guess it sounds like that should be a part of the controversy but i guess that's more like a fun fact because they just i mean they didn't really get into trouble or they didn't get sued for that stuff so i guess it was fine but <laughs> Moving on to the next fact, Robot Chicken was named after a menu item. Robot Chicken is on a menu at a Chinese restaurant, Kung Pao Bistro in West Hollywood, California. Writer star Brecken Mayer said that neither he nor the creators of the series know what the hell it is. But it's kind of fun because now I'm like, that just sounds like a mystery kind of meal. Robot Chicken, like what exactly makes it? robot chicken <laughs> next fact the pilot for rick and morty was written in six hours instead of three months which i guess is like the standard time allotted for someone to have a pilot be written and i'm trying to remember they said that they took that time to write it in six hours because rick and morty is based off of a short that justin Rowland created called dark doc and marty which is a parody of Back to the Future. And I've seen clips of Doc and Marty. That, if you think Rick and Morty is crazy, that is more, it's on another level from Rick and Morty. So they, so Dulcimer was like, yeah, we already saw this and um, we don't like it that much. And we need for y'all to tone it down. And so that's exactly what they did. And that's how we got the first episode of Rick and Morty. And, you know, of course, now 
Rick and Morty is one of their most popular shows on the network. Other fact, Aqua Teen Hunger Force had a three second blood rule. They couldn't show blood spattering out of someone for more than three seconds. And the crea I believe they said the creators of the show hated that. But my last little fun fact is Adult Swim. If you don't know like what exactly the name stands for, because after like all these years of knowing of the network i never for once like stopped and be like what the hell does it even mean but the name for this programming block comes from the term for a lifeguard's break the children can't be trusted to swim by themselves so they are kicked out and only a, the adults can swim in there and to reinforce the idea that it, like this programming block was only for adults and i clearly remember this they used to have like videos of older people like swimming in a pool and i used to think it was so weird because i'm like why are y'all showing this but they just wanted to i guess get, get kids to switch off and go to something else like go watch disney channel or something that is today's episode about the history of adult swim um let me know if you learned anything that you previously didn't know about adult swim is there anything that i didn't mention i'll see you in the next episode take care